we classify burns into first, second, and third degrees. The first degree is the most superficial, and the patient presents with a defined red area. These can be mildly or moderately painful, but they heal completely, leaving no residual symptoms or scars. Second degree burns are more interesting. They reach down in the skin, but they do not reach the hypodermis fat. The hallmark is severe pain and blisters. The pain is actually more severe than the third degree because the skin nerves are involved and these keep the pain going until the patient completely heals. So you need good analgesia. They often heal leaving minimal to no scars. Sometimes there will be a small necrotic area in the middle of the burn area and this necrotic tissue need to be taken out. And this is called debridement. Third degree burns are ones that go deeper into the muscles or fat tissue. These ones look much worse than they feel. The patient will have mild to moderate pain because the pain nerves are actually dead and you might see an exposed bone or exposed muscles. In any case, you need to do the debridement, so you need to take out all the dead tissue, and sometimes you need to do skin grafting. For adults, we use the thigh area, and for infants and children, we use the skin and the buttocks area. If the skin is insufficient, we can use Meeks grafting which is modifying the transplanted skin and this increases the cover-up area up to nine times. The most common cause of skin transplant failure is infections, seromas, and hematomas. However, before you put any skin, make sure that the debridement is very good. So sufficient debridement is necessary. Burn patients often have severe dehydration, so you need to rehydrate them and we can calculate the amount of rehydration using Parkland's formula, which goes as follows. You multiply 4 ml by the body surface area and by the weight in kilos. You'll get a number. You give half of this amount in the first 8 hours and the other half in the next 16 hours, so a total of 24 hours. To calculate the body surface area, Remember that the palm of the hand is equal to 1%. And so, the body surface area goes as follows. The torso is 18% anteriorly and 18% posteriorly. Each lower limb is 18%, so that's 9 anteriorly and 9 posteriorly. Each arm is 9%, so 4.5 and anteriorly and 4.5 and posteriorly. And the head and neck are together 9%. When measuring the body surface area, we only measure the second and third degrees. So we do not count or measure the erythema that we see in the first degree only. When resuscitating burn patients, remember that we only use Ringer lactate. And the best predictive method for good hydration is the urine output. So before starting rehydration, insert a Fose catheter. Normally, to indicate the prognosis, we look at the patient's age. The higher the age, the worse the prognosis. Second after age comes these other comorbidities, such as heart failure, kidney disease, and other diseases. There is another scoring method known as the box score, and this is used to indicate the prognosis. It basically gives you a rough number of how likely the patient is to survive. We measure it using age plus the body surface area plus 17 if there is inhalation or injury. Inhalational injuries are caused by hot air or hot fluid that goes into the respiratory system. And of course, the deeper it goes, the worse the symptoms and the outcome. So if a patient, for example, is trapped in a burning building and we see evidence of burning nostril hairs but nothing else in the respiratory system, the prognosis is usually very good. On the other hand, if there is carbonous sputum or evidence of soot in the bronchi, the prognosis is very bad. 
because this indicates a lower respiratory tract burn. If the lower respiratory tract is involved, often we have to use antibiotics because the risk of infection is very high. In any case, the most accurate test for inhalation and burns is the clinical examination and the bronchoscopy. But if you want something more specific, the ratio of PaO2 to FiO2, if it was more than 350, this indicates inhalational burns. The treatment simply goes as follows. We put the patient in a prone position and we have to do aggressive pulmonary toilet. We inject fluids into the lungs and we take him out. And this washes the lungs and takes out all the small debris. Sometimes the patients have feeling of drowning because understandably they have fluids in their lungs. But it has to be done because it's very necessary. We can also use albuterol or any other bronchodilator, antioxidants like inacetylcysteine and aerosolized heparin, which is used to dilate the small clots that form in the burn patients. Use the link below to get access to the full dermatology course. This includes more than 60 lectures with study notes and revision cards. You will also get access to the flashcards and MCQs. Thank you for watching.